we do everything from the the project manager's bio being sent to the customer to know this is the guy that's going to come do your project and this is with a little bit about him to yeah. uh, specific SOPs to getting our project manager there on site, uh, clear explanation explanation prior to us coming out of what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, the the guy shows up, the guy um, t meets with the customer and follows a very specific standard operating procedure. It's called a fast feel form. That's step by step uh, how to how to manage that job site. Yeah. You know, obviously he has to learn how to play checkers before you can play chess. So sure. basics first, and then they can move throughout the basics once they get better. Um, upon completion, I mean, the guy will take video footage, audio uh, uh, pictures at certain timestamps uh, to record work, mm -hmm. um, pictures of underlayments and how everything's installed to back ourselves up. And then the final completion is uh, an inspection report that they have to fill out. Um, crossing every T, dotting every I. Okay. And at the very end, they always ask a customer, um, prior they ask them, um, and to set up for a review is like, hey, if we were to give you that great experience that you're looking for, would you mind giving us a review at the very end? Did we do that for you? Right. Yes. Hey, would you mind giving us a review? And trying to find a specific thing that the customer really liked about our company and getting them to write that specifically. Sure. It's not only a five-star review, it's a five-star review with specific content. Yeah. Um, cause we want to know what we did to impact those people. Right. Our, 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 our goal is to impact people and give them an amazing experience. Well, we want to know what we did really well and we want to know what we fell short on. Yeah. So, uh, you know, even our follow up on our, our, our phone calls, our specific questions to try to dig out from a customer what we could have done better at any one aspect of our process. So a lot of people don't want to hear that stuff yeah, because they want to think and believe that we're as great as we are and, and it was always room for improvement. Sure. And, and, and most personalities aren't going to want to tell you necessarily because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Right. So we always ask them a certain way to make it about the next customer that we want to serve. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing information that will help us give the next customer an even better experience than yeah. we gave you? Well, you know, promise you won't offend us and then try to get something. Right. And then dig that up. That's truly listening to your customer. Yeah. You know, if you can listen to your customer, you have to be quiet to really pay attention to what they're saying and trying to articulate. You get better at those things and you're going to dominate your market, you know, yeah, pretty no. much. I, I'll just add a quick point to yeah. that to Adams. Like the the communication loop, one of one of the things we did recently in mining the data from the customers, even those customers that gave us nines and tens. Yeah. So we call every customer doing that promoter score, and it looks good, right? On overall, you're like, wow, that's really great. Uh, but when you we looked into the data, one of the biggest opportunities for us was communication. Mm. Communication after the sale. Okay. Right through the uh, project mayor showing up on the job that day. Because in our business, weather has an extraordinary impact on whether or not we can actually produce the work. Sure. So you think about think about a uh, the director of operations scheduling 40 jobs for the week and then them all getting drifted to the next day. You got to call every single, it's, it's just a, a ripple effect. And people don't check their text or they don't oh, even check their voicemail. And it doesn't, like Adam says, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they they took off work. They yeah. they want to be there, and now they're angry because they didn't know. Yeah. And so, but that was one of the pieces of feedback. It was like, hey, we, uh, the customer was like, when these things happen, we need more communication. Right. So it caused us to be creative and say, okay, how, how are we going to handle this? And and so, for example. Hey, I was, I'm down. Like, no, what, so what, what is it? Like, you do? Yeah. So, so what happens is Scott comes to work at like 530 in the morning. <laughs> he starts He starts plowing emails and texts, but. Yeah. You're not checking that at no at eight a.m. in the morning. You're you're going to go to work and then it yeah. Well, what happens? Uh, what happens is when his mind, he's like, well, I re I reached out. I I I didn't get a hold of him. I didn't hear from him. Right. But now, uh, in the morning, then we have someone from the office call. Okay. Actually, so call and try to speak with the customer oh. to just to make that experience just one more touch point. Right. Instead of saying, well, it's your fault, customer. We didn't. What well, doesn't matter. It's our. At the end of the day, we have to make it easy uh, and and communicate in a way that meets their needs, right? But that's just one area. I could give you a, quite a few, but that's one area recently that now we, we're doing a white, uh, we set up a whiteboarding session 
and we're going to do an end-to-end -end on the customer communication loop from the sale oh. through the project manager. And we're just going to look at all the touch points yeah. around that circle and where the gap is. Yeah. So we sit, we call it a communication loop and where are the gaps in that loop. And then what we try to do is just is say, okay, what, what's the best way to solve for it? You're doing this right now? Right now. It's literally in the... It's either this next week or the following. Okay, week. so you haven't started that process yet. Well, well, we did. We you did. A little well, to, to put the band aid on, we got the office to call. Okay, because it was just, it, you know, it's a it's a bad experience. But to Anna's, it's like, where else are we? Where well, yeah, the other trees? If you've unearthed some other, yeah. Things, so we, it's, we will. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's great that you're actively doing that. Yeah, my my point is to the folks listening is that. We do what's called a net promoter. That's an industry standard, recognized way to evaluate how well you're doing with your customers. Yeah. My point is we have a we have a ninety percent net promoter. Well, most people are well, that's enviable. That's great. Yeah. But we always we also ask them what's one thing we could have done better to make this experience better for right. you. Right. And when you read those, even out of the nines and tens, it was, Hey, you moved my job. It would have been nice to hear from you earlier or something, you know. Just stuff like that and just those little tea leaves yeah. give you enough to say, okay, if we do that, could we grab a couple of extra points on promoter for next year? Sure. sure. By the way, everybody's paid on it. Yeah. Everybody's paid on that promoter. So okay. they're motivated to make that experience. It, comp plans actually help drive a self-led uh, environment, but the, those things really help and people are like, well, yeah, we got to get a couple more points on that promoter or I'm not going to get my bonus. 